On the 27th of May 2021, Sean and I were meant to be married. Sean asked me to marry him in Hamilton Island. One thing in particular I was really looking forward to was the venue. So it's in this beautiful place in Ireland, in Carlingford in Four Seasons Hotel, where the mountain meets the ocean. I've always dreamt of getting married there. It's just exactly what I imagined on our wedding day. I had visions of me with this lovely long blonde hair walking down the aisle, but unfortunately because of COVID meant that we couldn't leave the country, so we did have to cancel. If you had said to me, COVID or no COVID, I was never meant to get married, I would say you're having a laugh. But I suppose there were things coming for us, um, well for me, that were out of my control. So with our wedding being cancelled with COVID, we decided to book a holiday and Martine's get up and go attitude, kind of she booked a holiday to give us something to look forward to. The Saturday that we were meant to get married, we had a bit of a relaxing day in Hamilton Island that day. And I discovered two lumps in my right breast. We both went to the doctors um, to hear that it was breast cancer, that it came back positive for invasive ductal carcinoma, uh, which basically means uh, breast cancer and it was on the move. And there's surgery in three weeks for a mastectomy and a reconstruction. So after I had been diagnosed, I was in the breast cancer clinic in the Royal, where I first met the breast care nurses. Jill and Jenny had booked in every single appointment that we needed. I think there was like maybe 11 in the dairy for over the next couple of weeks, which was absolutely incredible because it just took away the whole admin side um, and I suppose the stressful side that we didn't need. You know, we, we didn't know who to call, when to call, what to ask for, and they completely sorted everything. You know, being out here without your family and having someone like Jenny and Jill look after you, it was kind of like that, that nurturing side that you would get from your parents or you would get from your guardian. And knowing that they were there, you know, they were experienced, they were a bit older, I just really looked up to them. I think with Jenny and Jill, they're going through this every day with so many different patients and they see a massive percentage coming out the other side of it. And for us at the beginning, the worst part about it was the unknown. So they kind of give you the reinsurance that everything's going to be fine um, and people are going through this every day. So when you are diagnosed, you do get loads of information and one of them was around the, was your, your mental state. So contacts for counsellors, psychologists, so having that as another layer, I suppose, of protection. They obviously look after the physical side, but this is then the mental protection. Waking up from my mastectomy and reconstruction, I was really, really sick, very emotional, a bit kind of lost. Um, I didn't really know where I was. And I just remember waking up and seeing the face of this nurse, um, her name's Amy. And automatically I just felt like I knew that I was going to be looked after by her um, really, really well. So when I woke up, I had puked on myself. It was all over the bed. I remember I was coming in and out of the sleep and I could see her in and out checking on me to make sure I was okay. She'd often sit on the bed if I was feeling emotional. I, I knew that I was in great hands. Once they take your, um, I suppose your tissue, have it um, examined at pathology, we then discovered that there was actually a third lump and it had spread to the lymph nodes in my right arm. So unfortunately that meant going back in for more surgery and having my lymph nodes removed in my right arm. And then things just progressed really quickly from there. So I went for genetics testing, um, which we found out that my family had carried the bracket to gene mutation, meaning our risk of cancer is much higher. The chemotherapy basically makes you lose your hair. So what I decided to do was take back a bit of control. And um, before my hair started falling, I, I decided to brave the shave and shaved all my lovely long hair off. Part of my treatment is um, to put me into a medically induced menopause um, and 
that was one of the reasons why I also went down the fertility route um, to harvest eggs and, and defreeze them. So Martine was 29 when she came to see us in the fertility de department. She had a new diagnosis of an invasive breast cancer and she was scheduled to receive surgery and chemotherapy as part of her treatment. There was concern that the chemotherapy would damage or destroy her ovaries, leaving her unable to have children in the future. So we've been able to offer her a free cycle of egg freezing. To do this, we gave her 10 days of hormone injections. After 10 days of hormone injections, we were able to conduct an egg collection, which is a minor surgical procedure, and we were able to collect seven eggs for her. So the other treatment we were able to offer Martine was to provide her with a drug called Zolidex. The purpose of that is twofold. Firstly, we believe it can protect the eggs within the ovaries. So while she's having chemotherapy, the damage the chemotherapy does is reduced. But also by reducing the amount of estrogen in her body, it's a protection against recurrence of breast cancer. So the plan is to use Zolidex for five years. She'll be in a menopause-like state for five years, but it's reversible. So at the end of that, the injections stop, her periods can resume, and then there's a chance of her having a child. Knowing that the fertility clinic is there, so that post five years when we do want to maybe start looking to have a family, we can go down that route of IVF. I had a scan on the 2nd of the 2nd, 22, which is quite a significant number to me. And uh, the best news ever was that I was cancer free. <laughs> I never thought I would feel or see or even get close to that veil. After her diagnosis, I would say she's courageous, very, very strong. And I think that gave me the strength to get through it in a way that she was so strong. 